the white elite. And then there's the rest of New Orleans. So you have Mardi Gras Indians dressing in their suits and coming out and parading on, in their carnival. And then there's all the people that are just in costumes out on the streets and people that are in the parade like we're in. Carnival is a whole universe. So there's a universe full of carnivals and little constellations appear and disappear. And, and you have supernovas and all kinds of stuff happening in this little cosmos that is the day of, of Carnival. It's just a sea of people and all doing their own things. It's there for everybody at whatever level they want to participate. The most famous New Orleans carnival is the French-influenced carnival organized not by the public authorities, but by the crews. It starts with the Cru du Vieux in its own territory of the French Quarter, a reminder of the colonial past that made New Orleans such a unique city. I'm uh, Kenny Rubenstein. Well, uh, I am definitely a New Orleans boy born and bred, and uh, it was not easy living out of that, this town. It's just very unique. I love this town. I'm very proud of my city. I think that uh, it is the most unique city in this country. Um, it is the closest to European city that you can get um, anywhere outside of Europe. Uh, I mean, uh, you walk through the streets of the French Quarter, and you know, if you've been there, you can imagine just about any European city you know, uh, that you're walking through. You'll take it. They bring luck. You try to catch as many necklaces as you can in the three colors of the carnival. The tradition started in the late 19th century. Purple for justice, green for faith, and gold for power. There you go, come here. Another bee. Happy Mardi Gras. Can you dance? You're welcome. The Cru du Vieux Parade is a neighborhood affair. Designed for the area's narrow streets, the floats are relatively small. It is famous for being very close to the original spirit of Carnival, inherited from the Roman Saturnalia. I think outside, people don't have any concept of what Carnival is. I mean, it's a chance just to have fun, just to, you know, do what you want to do, costuming on Mardi Gras Day, dress as anything you want uh, and, and have a good time. So it is strange and there are strange things you'll see, but having grown up here and been around it, it's hard to be surprised. The rhythm of Carnival gradually takes over the whole city. 70 crews, 70 parades over a two-week period. It's surprising when you think about what happened here 10 years ago. In August 2005, Hurricane Katrina left 80% of New Orleans underwater, especially the poorer neighborhoods located below sea level. More than 2,000 people died. It was a human, ecological, and economic catastrophe. Yet barely six months after Katrina, despite the desolation, the crews all paraded. Carnival 2006 will go down in the history books. There was many people outside of the city who were, I don't know, upset, bothered by the fact that we actually had Mardi Gras right after Katrina. I mean, but you gotta understand what Mardi Gras is about. The city needs that. We need to go back and feel like, you know, celebrate our city and, uh, and tell people we're here and we're going to continue and we're, we're never going away. This resurrection for the reveler of yesterday back in his suit and tie today was crucial. An illustration of the American melting pot, his family and its history are inseparable from New Orleans. Jewish immigrants who opened a small dry goods shop, one century later, it is the ready-to-wear menswear store downtown. Kenny is a leading figure. He's a member of a famous crew, Orpheus. Mardi Gras is made up of several different crews. There's, you know, crews that are made up of people that uh, started in a bar. It's a bunch of bar 
others that are um, from clubs. There's a Pickwick Club and things like a Boston Club who create more exclusive type things. Um, all male, there's all female ones like Muses. Like in Orpheus' case, there's no requirements. You just uh, you pay the dues and you can be a member. Uh, uh, but those crews form together to have the riders. There'll be um, a board, there'll be officers. For example, uh, you'll have the captain who's in charge of everything. Uh, then you have uh, like chief lieutenant, which is my position in Orpheus. Uh, I, my job is to then get all the information and make sure all the lieutenants, who each have a float of their own, know what's going on, know what to do, and, and also give them information to pass on to their riders. Well, you know, being a member of Orpheus, it's similar to my pride in, in the business I have here. I mean, uh, uh, Rubenstein's, it's all, all about New Orleans. The Orpheus Parade takes place toward the end of Carnival. Kenny is in charge of the floats. Today, he's meeting up with his lieutenant. It's the whole energy. I think it's the energy of the whole. In the, it, you can actually feel it in the city, I think, sometimes. You know, it's just like, it's buzzing, it's electric. It's the closer you get to Mardi Gras, I, I do. I've ridden in other parades, never got that feeling as much. Exported to Louisiana in the 17th century, where it became the biggest festival among wealthy white people, the carnival has its own strict codes. A parade of decorated floats with a king and queen for each parade. It's both a tribute and a takedown of aristocratic customs. Here, Carnival is a great mix of past and present. The official carnival primarily takes place in the city's wealthy neighborhoods. But here, it's an entirely different place. Another America, another carnival, for another community. Here, it's the Mardi Gras Indians rehearsing for the big day. There is another Mardi Gras that's not commercialized. It's called Black Mardi Gras. We just was doing it because um, we were not allowed to participate in Mardi Gras. We wanted to start our own, in our own neighborhoods, paying homage to the Native Americans, but it didn't have any, any interference with anything else that was going on. This was something that we just couldn't do, so we started doing our own neighborhood, but nobody would come. Only the neighborhood people would know that. The flags of the Saints, the city's football team, cannot wipe out the memory that Treme was one of the hardest hit neighborhoods during Hurricane Katrina. Ten years later, the scars are still visible.
What's up, Ma? <laughs> All right. Hey, honey. The city retains the dual memory of victims from the early days of American history, slaves and the decimated Indian populations. Mardi Gras Indians started way, way back in the 1700s. And it began with the slaves running away from the slave owners. And whenever they were caught, they were beaten so bad, or either they killed them, they ran to the Native Americans. And they accepted them. So that is really how the blood got mixed. Well, my life was completely changed when Honey started massing at, at uh, six years old. Mardi Gras Day is the only thing um, I look really forward to, no other holidays. They come and they go. I don't get any presents or anything, no Father's Day, no nothing. My mom, what I get for Christmas from my mom is two yards of material. I didn't have a normal childhood like the rest of the kids. I had to sew. I had to be inside. I didn't go to parades because I am, I don't know what it's like Mardi Gras day to say, hey, mister, throw me something. And my mom wanted that, and that's what I am now. It has evolved into a, a lovely thing. <sighs> Everyone is not, um, not blood, full blood, or, or partially blood, Native American. Just so happened so I am um, Choctaw, and my grandfather was German. So now you got American Indian, <laughs> black Indian, with gold in his mouth, masquerading, paying homage to the Native Americans, which is very unusual throughout the world. And it only happens here in New Orleans. I'm finishing up this piece, a headpiece, for my Indian suit. Mardi Gras is a week away, and it's very time consuming. And I don't use a rack, I, I sew free-handed, and there's not too many people left that can do it. I'm strictly concentrating on these beads, because if I don't, these fingers right here, which are all torn up, the needle will go through it. Um, I did a scenery over here. I did a scenery on the back of my jacket, it's a nice scenery, and to give that look, to that, that authentic, that, that real feel to it, in nighttime, it, it's, it's really hard to do. So therefore, all of this is seed beading. It took at least two and a half months just for the top. The rest of it is seed beading, but I got tired and tried to do it, take a shortcut, and I used the size eight beads right here, which is just a little bit bigger than the other one. The smaller the bead, the finer the detail of the fire, the Indian running around the fire, for the spirit is coming out, is something that the Indian wants. And to get it, he has to go through a ritual. Missing. Who's missing? Uh, Jaden's missing, that's right. Okay. I actually grew up in Virginia, but I moved here when I was 22. I just loved it so much that I really wanted to stay. So the year was 2003. I was actually dating someone at the time whose mother was one of the original members of Muses, and um, she called me up and said, if you would like to ride in a Mardi Gras parade, bring $400 and come downtown, and I can get you a ride in Muses. And of course, I loved Mardi Gras. That was one of the things I loved most about the city, just the carnival and the excitement of it all. Um, so I immediately scraped up my money, went downtown, and um, that was my first ride. And then I became a member 
um, of the crew that year. And um, that was the third year that Muses had been rolling. So, hey, everybody. Hi. Yeah, hey, you guys. Long time no see. <laughs> Last week when I was sitting down, I, I hadn't even looked at myself because, of course, I had the burn on my thumb, which is all I was caring about. And my husband came in and he said, I can see you sparkling from across the house. <laughs> but that's OK. I am sacrificing for my art. Maybe I can glue some down here, too. Oh, that is fantastic, that shoe. I love it. We wanted something that we would make that we could share. We wanted something that would be particular to women. And of course, the high heel shoe from the first year and everything, we put that together. Right. There's something very definitely sort of a little bit suggestively trashy about red high heels, yes. right? <laughs> There's something yes. suggestive about red yes. high heels. That's yes. right. Mm -hmm. um, I'm one of the co-lieutenants of our float. We yes. have 44 women on our float. Well, we have about 900 that ride, mm -hmm. and probably something like, I don't know, 1,500? On the waiting list? Yeah, on the, way, uh, the whole membership. I may be wrong, but something like that, so. Right. Only women. Only That's women. right. That's only women. Right. Only women. <laughs> We're very sorry, but only women. <laughs> it, I, it arose because women wanted to ride in Mardi Gras, and there weren't that many opportunities for women to ride in Mardi Gras. And so a few women got together and said, well, if we can't ride, let's make our own crew. And they did. We're not the biggest crew anymore, but um, maybe the most famous. Uh, absolutely, the best. We parade Thursday night to very big crowds. So we have to work hard. <laughs> <laughs> You I'm not sure have, one can ever be never ready. Have enough shoes. That's right. You're never ready. Never have enough shoes. Hey guys, how y'all doing? doing? How y'all doing? Happy Mardi Gras. Happy Mardi Gras. Mardi Gras. You ready? Mm hmm. come from a musical family. We come out of the Trey May district. We've been playing music a long time in the city. Um, I played trombone for about four years now, like consistently. For me to be a musician, I would say it's my life, because if I wasn't playing music, I don't know what I would be doing like with myself because this is what I've been doing since I was like four, and I'm 17 now. I mean, being from, um, from, from the trip, me, it was like, it's the jazz corner of the world. It's been uh, 200 years. It's the, um, the oldest African-American neighborhood in the country. But like, you can see some of the, um, some of the things like the happen and the result of it. Like if you go down to the Ninth Ward, and seeing the still all um, the abandoned houses and all the like places that still that they still haven't fixed up. It's it's good to be in the marching band because like the bands in the center city, like most of them are still trying to rebuild and like get more people to come. Jazz plus carnival, that's New Orleans's identity. And for the kid from Treme who wants to become a professional musician, Carnival offers lots of opportunities to perform in public. In addition to high school, he attends NOCA, the famous art school, in the jazz section. For him, the big band classes are also a way to prepare for the marching bands. Orlando, do you have the chords written for um, at measure 86? Da 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 da
So now with uh, Ravon Solo, 51, please. 51. A one, two, three, four. <laughs> One person that's probably inspired me the most is my big cousin, Glenn David Andrews, because like a couple of years ago, I was um, out there playing on the corner on Frenchman, Frenchman at Charters, and he, um, he came put me to the side and talked to me, and he brought me on, on a gig with him at the Three Muses, and ever since then, I've been playing with him a lot more, and he's just a cool person. Very nice. From the top. One, two, from the top, two, three, four. It's not just the Muses or Ravon that are in full preparation mode. Since we left our Chief Lieutenant of Orpheus, he has barely stopped working. There are only a few days left before the parade. Ellie, do you get you got the music working? Almost there. <laughs> Our idea is to spread that Mardi Gras to everybody. Everybody has the opportunity to do it. But at the same time, Orpheus wants to stay true to the historic ideas of Mardi Gras. I mean, the old floats. If you look at our floats, we have flowers that are made, I mean, by hand, every year, redone, new flowers that go cover the floats. And I don't, I'm not talking like carnations, like in the Rose Bowl or roses. I'm talking about big paper mache flowers that are giant, the size of me. <laughs> and they cover the float. And it just, they look beautiful, the whole thing. From costumes down to the colors on the float, to the flowers, to, to what we throw. It's all orchestrated to make the greatest rolling show in the world. You can see some of the beads, you know, are stacked up to there. You got bags of yeah. beads. And it usually looks much fuller than it does uh, this time. Um, we, we have the luxury of having a little space, which is nice. You have this, and then you have beads just all over the place. Literally, we're usually standing on beads to start the, the parade. I am putting on drag king makeup. It's like creating different shades on my face so that there's like stronger like angles, like where a man's face would be more like angular. And this is my first time, so everything that I'm doing I learned on the internet. <laughs> um, but men are usually like more angular on their face and they're like jawlines or angular, so I'm trying to darken that up. And I did a fake Adam's apple here. It just doesn't look as high here. You know what I'm saying? When you're a member of one of these gangs, ready and willing to let go, Carnival is the perfect time to party, while reconnecting with this cultural mix that was the core of the original Carnival. And you gotta clean this up, because it's like smudged right on the end there. Just seven days, bum, 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 I can make you a man. Thanks, <laughs> Good. <laughs> I'm glad finally somebody can. <laughs> but there you go. That's manly. <laughs> now you're turning me on. Stop yes. it. Yeah, <laughs> stop it. Oh, baby. <laughs> Why are you going to turn me on like that? Does it make you feel more empowered now? Oh, yeah. That's good. That's good stuff. <laughs> God. Mardi Gras for me, I've been living here my whole life. I love Mardi Gras. Mardi Gras is the spirit of New Orleans. It's a great party, and it's really, it's a lot of fun to just story experience it. Hang out with your friends.
We really love to dress up here. We really love to be someone else, even if it's just for a day or a couple hours or whatever. Today is the big day for Rebecca. She is in her element. Well, Muses is an organization of women who are um, dedicated to the arts. And the first few rides, all of the ladies wore on their heads ivy wreaths with tiles that spelled out Muses and lights. And um, actually, the, a lot of the ladies on my floats missed that. So this year, we decided we would wear um, ivy wreaths again, sort of a retrospective to the beginning. Mardi Gras affects me because I'm a musician in the city, and like it's a tradition for like them to have the bands marching in the parade, getting Indians, all the floats and all that. Mardi Gras, for me, is nice. I like it. I mean, no matter where I'm at, as long as I'm playing my horn, I'm having fun. So I just, um, it just be fun, just going out there, just being able to play my horn.
in the near future, I would hope to be a professional musician touring the world and traveling. Yeah, doing that, living the dream. Carnival is all about a mixture of styles. The rule is, anything goes. After the musicians come the noisitions. We play uh, homemade instruments. We don't really have songs or anything like that, but it's all like crazy trash can drums and, you know, like messed up electronics and stuff like that. It's a good time to just cut loose and forget about everything else going on in the world that's horrible or whatever and, you know, all the like serious stuff. It's time to be silly, you know. For one weekend and two public holidays, most everyone in New Orleans has staked out a spot along the route of the major parades. Mardi Gras has taken over the entire town. Pre-Katrina New Orleans had a majority of African Americans. It has since become predominantly white, and today, the white society is in the streets. But behind these friendly, cheerful images is a much less harmonious story. Watching these riders, it's impossible to forget that after the Ku Klux Klan was banned, carnival became the only time people were allowed to wear masks. Mardi Gras, well, it is, it's, Mardi Gras is a family event. I mean, kids come out, you, you have your family, it's a, you, you stake out your section of the neutral ground that your family, and you have, you know, not just your kids, but you have your neighbor's kids and your neighbors and your aunt and uncles and your extended family, you know, be 25 different family members from every generation, and that's really what it is. Riding on a float is, there's no way to describe what it's like. Uh, the, the best I can do is I can tell you that um, I used to do concert security as a, uh, in college, and I escorted Aerosmith. And I, I didn't go on stage, but I stopped right at the edge of the stage. 
and the lights came up and the fans went nuts and were screaming and I had that rush like they were screaming for me. It's the same rush I feel on a float. All those people out there screaming for you to throw them a bead. I mean, two cent bead, it's all they want, but they're ecstatic and they have, and, and I love throwing that bead and having that person enjoy it. You know, you can see the happiness in their face, whether they're young or old, of getting a thrill. I have to figure out, I have to figure out where my children are standing, you know, my family. Because there's a lot of people up there. Bad luck. A storm broke out over the Orpheus parade. Enough rain and wind to dampen the public's enthusiasm. But people here have seen worse. Oh, shit, it's coming down now. You're wet and excited. Maybe a little cold. But I'm having fun. And I love these people who stayed out in the rain to catch beads, because that's what Mardi Gras is about. So they get lots of beads. They get all the beads. The official carnival starts early today and stops at noon. Two crews are paraded. Zulu represents the Afro-Americans in carnival. Everyone is wearing music hall blackface. Rex perpetuates the legacy of the traditional crews once run by the city's businessmen. Zulu and Rex, or the display of a peaceful coexistence that is nonetheless still highly problematic in American society. The marginal status of the Mardi Gras Indians best represents the hiatus between black and white. This morning, they are parading through the middle of Treme. In the past, these groups were viewed as gangs. Today, it has become a theatrical ritual. It's a very special feeling of being an Indian. You know, it, when you put the suit on, you become someone else, you know, and we don't need any permits. We don't need no time limit. It's just free for the Mardi Gras Indians to walk the streets of New Orleans. My day is Mardi Gras day. That morning when I wake up, I have butterflies until I meet the first Indian. sold all year long on my suit, and it's a feeling that comes over you. Your body, you're wearing a suit that is probably the same amount of your weight or even more, but when you transform and put that suit on, you don't feel any of that. So therefore, we want to meet every Indian on the street and show them that my suit is better than yours, because at one point in time, Indians used to fight, physically fight, 
And every now and then, occasionally, you'll get that. But for the most of it, I want to show the next guy that I outsold you throughout the year. And that's very sacred, and it's just in the heart of what we do to keep the culture alive. There's more than just the official carnival, the Mardi Gras Indians and the gangs of revelers. Atypical and even marginal, still others aim to reconnect with the original spirit of carnival. My name is Sally Ann Glassman, and I'm from the state of Maine, which is in New England in the United States, and I'm what's called a Mambo Asagwe, a high priestess of Voodoo, and I was initiated in Port-au-Prince, Haiti. So I'm a bit of an anomaly because I'm white and Jewish and Ukrainian originally. It doesn't bring to mind the, the image of Vodou. Most people think of African Americans or African source people, but New Orleans is a port, it's a melting pot. So it's been in our history that um, anybody can practice Vodou. Vodou is a religion. The intention is to reach into the invisible world of spirit and draw spirit through so it can guide us and, and help us and heal us. Both in Haiti and in New Orleans, we practice Mardi Gras. We, we hold it every year, and it's, it's a major event. It refers to Carnival, the, you know, the, uh, the, um, the farewell to the flesh. The flesh is leaving, and it comes just before Lent when things get sort of dismal and, and uh, we have to give up and be penitent. So this is a time of really celebrating what life is about. I think it's a very interesting time, and certainly in my practice, in my community, in my voodoo society, we honor that day, we participate in it, and we start by inviting the spirit to carnival. We do a ceremony in the morning, and, and we call up spirits called the Gede. And the Gede are interesting characters. They represent both life and death and sexuality. No floats, no membership dues, no pre-established rituals. The parade through Saint Anne is yet another carnival. A carnival for the creative classes, in the words of the sociologists. It's a bit like a potluck where everyone brings what they want. It means different things to different people. in a parade called the Crew of St. Anne, and we march as a gaggle of Gede. And sometimes we've had the spirit possess people in our group. Oh, 
And then we go to what's called the moonwalk on the Mississippi River, where we throw the ashes of any of the crew members who has died in the year preceding. So we have this theme of, of farewell to the flesh and, and life and death and, and this dance that goes on between the two the visible, the invisible, the real, the fantasy. It's, um, it's really trippy. The traditional Mardi Gras ends with the burial of Monsieur Carnival. Here, they have reconnected with this spirit, but with a new age twist. And in keeping with tradition, the end of the festivities is sad, but beautiful. Even when Mardi Gras is over, the festivities go on. It's nighttime on Bourbon Street, the famous party street. This is no longer the family-friendly carnival. It's more like a giant pub crawl for tourists, according to those who adhere to the true spirit of carnival. But our cheerful pair of party goers doesn't totally agree. Mardi Gras for us is like a two-week affair, really. And then Mardi Gras Day, we go out with a bunch of like just kind of friendly walking crews that are like drinking clubs, and we'll just go bar hop from bar to bar and drink and like, you know, give everybody drinks and, you know, it's a, it's a nice party. Everybody's in a good mood and everybody just, it's, everybody's a friend on Mardi Gras. And so by the end of Tuesday, like, by, by, by the time Tuesday comes, we're completely worn out. We're just done. We're done totally. Everyone can choose their own carnival in New Orleans, or choose them all. The French Quarter Carnival is like a mosaic. And today, every community, every small gang can experience their own carnival. For now, it continues in the bar for a little while longer. And when I say different games, I don't mean color of red and blue. That's a term that we use for tribe down here. All right, hands go to clapping, body go to moving. Watch out, Zanita, I'm coming from uptown. I don't buy down. John A. in his house. Oh! You can drink a little whiskey, drink a little wine. 